Hi everyone, how are you all doing? I hope you're doing very well. You know that I mean that sincerely as well. I wouldn't wish anybody all the happiness in the world if I didn't mean it. Anyway, what a shambles the UK is in at the moment. We are now looking at getting rid of another Prime Minister simply because she just doesn't have the metal for the job. Now, I, I don't want to be one of these people that say, I told you so. But I did very, very early pick up on the fact that she was not very articulate in front of the camera. She is quite timid in a lot of ways, and you just can't afford to be like that. Whereas Boris, you know, love him or hate him, some loved him, some hated him, you know that. He, uh, he was very good at blustering his way through all difficult questions, but she couldn't. Her answer the other day was, <laughs> yes, it was written down, it was given to her, but it, it was a reflection of her personality, and that is that there is nothing that she can say or add to an argument when she's asked a difficult question that can allay the fears. She's not able to allay the fears. In fact, only four journalists got to ask questions the other day. And she more or less gave the same reply back to every one of them and just added a bit of uh, different words along the way. But it was virtually the same answer. And it was quite pitiful to, to know that someone that was supposed to be leading us into better times hasn't got a clue what she's doing. So I do agree with Andrew Ma. Uh, I listened to his, uh, his interview the other day. And I think that uh, he is quite right. Should probably be out within a few days, a week or something like that. I can't see them limbering on to the end of the year to Christmas with her. That would uh, not be a good thing to do. And if they're going to bring someone else in, they have to bring someone else in that is able to uh, answer questions, difficult questions, give, give a perfect reply back. To, uh, to to some of those questions which were soul-searching and they found her out. And I don't even know if um, Boris would have been able to uh, answer those questions, but he would have been able to probably make people laugh in the, in the room with his answers. And uh, I'm afraid she didn't make anybody laugh. She added no humour. She was serious looking off camera like she does. I don't know who she's looking to. Does anybody know who Liz Truss is looking to when um, you see her? And they've got all of those PTZ cameras on the tripods. I don't know if you noticed that. They've got PTZ cameras. And then she's looking like that to the left. Who's she looking to? I mean, I could understand it when Biden did it because Biden's probably looking for, you know, his next uh, instruction from his aides. But who's Liz Truss looking to? Anyway, we don't know. People are guessing. But uh, it's very off-putting. Uh, it's not easy going before a camera. I mean, I'll give you an example now. I've just set four up. So I can look at this one here, yes. I can look at this one there, which is Agnif, and I can look at Frieda at the back there. And the fourth camera, I've got it trained just over my, uh, my desk. But you have to decide which camera is the camera that is likely to capture the... Uh, the presence of the, the mood and what you need to say. And uh, you look at that camera probably in percentage terms, probably 80% of the whole interview time. So you really do have to decide on which camera that is. And um, I know that there were three PTZ cameras on tripods during Liz's uh, interview. Uh, they were to pick up uh, probably the 4K60 resolution that it would have gone out in. And then there would have been additional cameras, but she was only looking at uh, the first camera, which was the centre camera, and then she looked away after that to the left. And I just don't know why she did it. I think it's a sign of uh, not being confident before the world's press. Wow. Now let's have a talk about Donald Trump. Again, you either love him or you hate him. 
Um, I personally, I don't mind Trump. I just don't like Biden. You know, I, I find that Biden is some kind of tin tucky placement president. It's just been put into place. I don't think he's been uh, put in there by legitimate means at all. I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with the findings uh, that the committee came up with. I don't agree with what they said. I think there was reason to look into that election. Things just did not gel the way they should do. Anyway, there's your politics out of the way. I'm not going into that too much. But at some stage, I think uh, the real truth bomb will get dropped on everyone. And it's not just what they're saying. It's convenient, isn't it, that in a month's time, they've got the uh, is it the half-term election. What did they call that the primaries, or is that just the half-term election? I can't remember now. Must brush up on US politics. And this is um, the Democrats' way of... Uh, getting Trump out of the picture, getting him well and truly out of the picture. But I don't think they're going to convince half of America on that uh, committee meeting. I don't think, even though they showed, you know, like footage that we'd never seen before, it, it still seemed as if it was a kangaroo court to me. Anyway, I'll have to see what Donald Trump says when he, if he actually comes before and answers to the subpoena. We don't know if he will do yet. We'll have to see about that. But I'll tell you one thing. Is the politically world, uh, sorry, is the world politically divided on uh, both sides of the Atlantic and the world over? Because look at Iran. Look at all those uh, that are rebelling in Iran. Uh, wow. The whole world's gone crazy, hasn't it? The next thing that's going to happen is the Euphrates River's going to dry up. And uh, they're going to march on uh, dry ground and be gathered together in one place. No, no, that's just me having another dream. <laughs> I'll see you all.